Caesar Moon, and welcome to beautiful Rocky Point. During the past few years, there's been an explosion of blues music within the tri-state area. I'm here today for the Cedar Beach Blues Festival to celebrate a resurgence of the soulful sounds of the blues. So let's meet some of the people behind the scenes and find out more. I think one of the reasons the blues is so popular today is because it's a very emotionally powerful music and it sneaks up on people and uh, they hear the blues without even realizing they're hearing it. It's on movie soundtracks, it's on commercials, it's in uh, television show themes and all that sort of stuff. And when they finally get to hear real blues performers, they suddenly realize, oh yeah, I know what that is and I like that. Blues is flexible. It's open to new ideas. It's open to new interpretations. It's not. It's not a. Um, it's not a decided, definitive formula. It can go anywhere. Blues music seems to hold a very special place in many of the musicians' hearts. So what's the magic? It's how you interpret it, interpret the uh, the music, and uh, and bring the magic out of it. It's. It, it, it basically a handful, you know, two or three chords that you're going to play, and um, and uh, you're using a blue scale and your own your own ideas with it, and and sometimes uh, magic does come out. <laughs> the magic of the blues. It's meeting girls. about the local blues scene. I had the opportunity to sit down with Carrie Kearney, winner of the Best Blues Band Award from the Long Island Blues Society. Carrie, how did you get involved with the blues? When I was, um, I was about 10 or 11, I guess, my brother brought home an album that's called Why Did the Regal? And I think it was recorded around 64, and it's by B.B. King. It was a live album. And um, just previous to that, I was listening to a lot of rock and roll music. I was listening to a lot of Cream, a lot of Eric Clapton. Uh, he turned me on to that stuff, too, in Brother Tim. Uh, well, like uh, Johnny went there. I love the way the guitar sounded, especially blues type guitar, but I really didn't know that it was blues type. I knew that it was rock guitar. It was kind of, um, had a lot of energy to it. It was like that. And then when he played me the album of uh, Live at the Regal, a couple of songs that are very, very slow on it, like uh, uh, It's My Own Fault or um, Sweet Little Angel, it reminded me a lot of uh, what Eric Clapton does when he plays like, a slow blues song. And I noticed it was just maybe a little bit slower, but the emotion was a little more what might have been lacking maybe in the other players, I thought, a little bit. Well, I think the future of the blues is actually going a little bit towards the younger people. A lot of people have, um, a lot of older people are actually very into the blues, but I think it's starting with the more rock-based type of blues that they have now, and it's starting to go towards the rock side. It's starting to attract the younger audience is the 20 somethings 30 somethings the music has been around for a long time and it's really it's not fading it's growing and it's still alive and well and it's gonna be here for a long time the blues has been around for a hundred years and I know it's gonna be around for at least another hundred well the beat rolls on we hope that you've enjoyed a little slice of this tri-state culture so why don't you get on out and enjoy the blues